Of all the fantasy and sci-fi tropes, time travel is perhaps the most beloved. Whether we're going 88 miles per hour in the DeLorean or helping the Prince of Persia do parkour, the prospect of turning back the clock invites a whole new realm of thinking and possibilities that titillates our imagination. It urges us to indulge in the what-if scenario, where we daydream about what we'd do differently with our lives if we had the power to control time and what those outcomes may be. When you think about all the occasions in your lifetime when you wish time travel existed, they will likely fit into one of two categories. The fantasy and explorative side, where you want to go and meet the dinosaurs, or have dinner with Einstein, and the other being the reflective and more resentful side, where you regret something you said to a loved one, or wished you could reverse a life-changing decision. And underneath its kitschy, larger-than-life appearance, the sexy brutale is much more about using this trope to explore the latter than you might expect at a first glance. Set inside a steamy, seedy casino mansion, the sexy brutale places you in the shoes of a masked priest who wakes up with the power to rewind time in order to stop a series of murders happening around the estate within a 12-hour window. You start off each day's cycle at the foot of a grandfather clock and explore around the mansion until you find the next set of victims you need to save. The guests and staff all move around like clockwork, sticking to a rigid schedule that is just begging to be interrupted. Typically, you'd shadow each victim and start learning where each person goes at specific times. They expect to have to rewind a few times to get the lay of the land before you can thwart each killer, usually by sabotaging their efforts from a distance. From a pure gameplay perspective, the time travel element is a nice way to give you infinite attempts to solve each puzzle, but it ends up adding a bit more to the experience. Your rewind ability is limited. Just like in Groundhog Day or Majora's Mask, you can only go back as the beginning of the crisis point in the timeline. As a result, after you resolve a murder one day, the person doesn't stay saved after you rewind. The mansion is sealed within a doomed time loop, and it subtly establishes the cold hard fact, you can't save everyone. This theme is touched on outside of the story through some really neat use of sound design too. While roaming around the mansion, you'll often hear very distinctive noises at certain times of the day, like a church bell ringing or glass shattering. These sounds correlate to different deaths occurring throughout the day, and they'll persist even after you rescue the victim. So even after you save this scientist from being shot, you'll continue to hear them die repeatedly as you move throughout the game. It's a small touch, but it really begins to create an oppressive atmosphere, and it makes your efforts feel more and more hopeless. You feel ashamed that you can't go around and help them. While the game tasks you with putting wrongs to right by making up for the mistakes of the past, it also quietly implies the impossibility of that task. The dead stay dead, that's a cold fact that cannot be undone. But you can take some comfort in the knowledge that in at least one of these timelines, some of them ended up okay. It's a shame then that there isn't a better marriage between the game's themes and its core gameplay. For all intents and purposes, the Sexy Brutale is an adventure game, the kind where you pick up and examine objects dotted around the rooms and use them to solve situational puzzles. The problem is the puzzles aren't very meaty. Several times during my first playthrough I was surprised by how suddenly some mysteries were resolved. It often felt like I needed to interact with a long chain of events before I could begin to throw my metaphorical wrench into it, but in practice, if you disrupt one little thing, everything else just kind of falls into place. The solutions to these puzzles don't even come close to the originality or the spectacle of the murders, and most of them are solved by pulling levers at the right time in distant rooms, and that just isn't inherently satisfying. The actual means of solving the puzzles don't serve the greater themes of the game directly, and when everything else about the game feels so considered, the puzzles feel like a missed opportunity. The mansion itself is arguably a little bit too big as well, with several connecting rooms filled with examinables that aren't compelling to actually examine. In older adventure games, characters would make observations about what they're looking at and give their take on it. This was always rewarding because it developed character. I just take a little more bread to honor the dead. In the sexy brutale, your character looks at something and the game gives you the observation. The bits of flavor text all read exactly the same as well, so pretty quickly you'll start inspecting them and skip reading the text completely. It doesn't help that the game's writing is also trying really hard to be funny in places, and a lot of the swearing just comes across as unnecessary. It was this approach to the writing that made me really worried for the game's ending. The gameplay was just good enough to see me through to the game's conclusion, though I was more interested in seeing how the story could tie everything together. The game starts off so well, but after a few hours of some mediocre puzzle solving, I had my doubts into how they could pull off a conclusion to this story. But it delivers, and it actually ends up justifying and contextualising a lot of the game's themes in a way that felt remarkably honest. There's a real dramatic tonal shift towards the ending that really caught me off guard, but it was a real breath of fresh air. Without diving too deeply into spoiler territory, the game's ending deals with a central character wrestling with guilt after a tragic accident they blame themselves for. They are borderline addicted to experiencing the events of the past, and in effect, they're repeatedly subjecting themselves to an attractive punishment. 
Okay, that's just a cute theory I had about the game's title, but I do believe this is what the game is all about, not living for the past. There is a theory about memory which suggests that you don't actually remember anything from your own past, rather you remember the memory of it and your brain fills in the gaps. If this is true, all memories are effectively fantasies. While it's fun to imagine travelling back in time, the truth is, you can't. Events happen and you have to live with the consequences. You can daydream about all the alternative possibilities, but they only exist as a fantasy, and the sexy brutale is all about coming to terms with that fact. In the case of most games and films that use time travel as a narrative device, it's often used to pose philosophical questions about destiny and how much control you have of your own life story, and the quote unquote good ending of the sexy brutale is all about coming to terms with your past and finally taking back control, which is literally expressed through one of the best uses of an audio cue I've seen in a game. It's a worthy and mature message, and despite a few tonal fumbles during the game's midpoint, the ending is almost pitch perfect, and it was good enough for me to get thinking about all this stuff in the first place. The best time travel stories don't just show us a dinosaur and call it a day. They explore why we yearn for the past, and question how destructive it can be to mess with the flow of time. The sexy brutale took me by surprise with its ending, which is equal parts uplifting and sombre, and it absolutely does something nifty with a story about rewinding time. We all like to believe in time travel, but we shouldn't dwell on the past for too long or you'll forget to live in the now.